Back when I released my first video, I received a request on a process for how to weather black cars. And we're gonna do just that, coming up on JC's Rip Track. Hi there, my name is John and welcome to JC's Rip Track. If you're looking for tips and advice on how to transform your plastic models into something that you would find on the rails today, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. So what tricks have you used to weather stuff that is already painted black? Please let me know in the comments section down below. One of the first comments that appeared on my Where Do I Start video that I posted back in September was a question from Joe G. He wrote, I'm interested in all these techniques, especially on black colored cars. I thought this was a great comment, especially with its implied question on black cars. It was the first of many suggested topics that I could start dealing with once I completed my Weathering Basics playlist. So, how do you weather black cars? In truth, weathering black cars isn't really all that different from weathering any other type of rolling stock or locomotives, but regardless of the color. The difference, however, is mostly in the color choices that one makes when it comes to weathering these cars and the sequence in which you do them early on in the weathering process. When it comes to weathering black cars, it's worthwhile to hit the internet or trackside and do some research. There are some general things that we can say about weathering black surfaces, but it does depend upon the car or the locomotive. The most common types of black colored cars that are out there are either tank cars or gondolas. Cover hoppers that carry carbon black are part of this list, although they are less common than tankers or gondolas. When it comes to locomotives, steam engines of course tend to lean towards black, and the livery of both Norfolk Southern and Canadian National have locomotives that are nearly entirely black or mostly black. One thing to note, particularly on rail cars that are black, is that when they start to show wear and tear, the paint has already faded. Sun bleaching tends to push the black into a grayish look as the paint deteriorates the process is known as chalking. First, the shine of the polished black surface disappears, and eventually the once black surface goes increasingly gray. So the heavier the weathering, the more faded the paint is likely to be. So that's really the secret to weathering black cars. By the time they're showing wear and tear, they're no longer really black. It means that when it comes to getting a good weathered look on a black car, what you do in the fading step is gonna have the most impact on what you end up doing. But let's put that into practice with a couple of examples. In the gondola that I weathered as part of the Down and Dirty Weathering Contest, this fade I simply did with an airbrush, using a mix of 10 parts Future Floor Polish to one part XF2 flat white and one part XF21 flat base. This was a translucent mix and a bit glossy in retrospect. If using this mix, I now suggest five parts Future instead of 10. In spraying this on the model, I focus largely on the upper parts of the car that are more likely to be exposed to the sun's rays. Now sun fading is never even as a coat like this would be. I don't recommend fading only with an airbrush, especially if that's all you're trying to do, since I would be adding some serious chips, graffiti, and a lot of heavy weathering to this gondola model. Fading with just the airbrush is fine, as the other parts of the process would break that up. In the case of this tank car, as the surface is largely rounded, there aren't as many opportunities for straight up chips as a box car or a gondola might have. So doing just a straight airbrush fade alone might come out too even. So in this case, I start with the airbrush fade, but I also follow it up fairly quickly with an oil dot fade. To speed this up, I airbrushed a five to one mix of future floor polish along with Tamiya's Sky Gray. This would leave a glossy surface where I could do the dot fade technique and cutting out a mid-step. For the dot fade technique, I decided to do something else other than use titanium white. For this, I needed to go to my local craft supply store and get something else. I decided to use an oil color called zinc white instead. Depending upon the brand you buy, it is sometimes called soft blending white. Either way, zinc white doesn't have nearly as strong a pigment as titanium white and therefore will work better in giving the appearance of an uneven faded black rather than a potentially glaring white streaks on the model. I also suggest using a bit of dark rust, some yellow ochre, and lamp black as the other oil colors to be used in the dot fade mix. Thank you. 
Once these fading steps are done, really, it creates a surface color and a texture that can more readily accept other conventional weathering techniques. In the case of this tank car, I then gave this car a pin wash using MIG Productions Dark Wash at various points to give it some volume. This provided a platform onto which other weathering techniques from chips to rust streaks to graffiti, dirt, dust or anything else could be applied. All I did was add some very subtle rust chips around the walkways, handrails and brake wheels, followed by some dust and then some extensive oil streaking around the midsection that would finish it off. If there is one major takeaway when it comes to weathering black cars is to remember this, black isn't black. It may seem a little bit odd, but the heavier that the weathering on a black car is going to be, the lighter the fading is going to be. It then makes all of the additional weathering steps easier to see. So as a shout out to Joe G, thank you very much for your question, and I'm hoping that everybody found this helpful. And if you want to get the most out of your painting and weathering projects, then please hit subscribe and that little bell icon so you can be notified anytime I upload a new video. Also, if you haven't done so already, check out the Weathering Basics playlist plus the other videos on this channel. And so thanks for watching, good luck, and may you keep on track.